So we slid in a new spot and we're trying something totally different today. So I want you to explain to everybody what we're, what's happened here. What's happened here? Well, we have record flows here out of the dams out of the Arrow and the Kootenai Reservoirs, 50 year high. And so we have to try different tactics today. I know, it's crazy. Soups. There hasn't been the hatches that we normally get in July. It is mid-July. Normally, caddis hatch come off, big caddis. This year, not, yes. not that many. That's right. It's uh, The flows are changed. The hatches aren't happening. But this area here is typically a trolling area. Yeah. You guys come up here and troll. They catch fish all year yeah. round. You got me in the lake. It's I in mean, essentially, we're fishing the Kootenai or the Columbia River yeah, Lake. Look here. how big it is. So <laughs> it is. It's huge. We'll put some fly fishing tactics. So what are we going to try? Today. Start off with a bugger. Oh, good. Woolly buggers in yeah. July. Yeah. Unheard of. Yeah. We've For never sure. done that before. Nope. So it's all about extremely high water. Today, as we take a sport fishing on the fly with my buddy Dwayne. Look at that big dome. Hey. I think it's the technique. I think it's the fisherman. <laughs> Some days are good and yeah. some days are better. <laughs> a lot better. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander, builder of world-class fly float and mooching reels. The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. And the Freshwater Fishery Society of British Columbia. Catch what you've been missing, go fish BC. Crazy this time of year. The old dry fly, little caddis on top. And it's just been just a nuts year. Like the water temperature is still only 57, 58 degrees. It should be, you know, as high as 64, 66. So it's really good actually water temperature for the rainbows, but they're just not coming up. I guess you got lots of feed with this big water. How deep does it say on that sounder right now? 39. Done. There's some fish uh, moving around down here. So what do you think? Let's just keep. Well, we'll keep sliding down the back here. I've got the electric motor going, so we'll just kind of. Yeah, we'll just drift in. Drift in, eh? Whoa! <laughs> on the bugger. <laughs> on the bulldog. Second cast. I decided to change it up. I was fishing the main floor. Decided to go on the back eddy, and this beautiful bow hit it. Just smoked it. This is crazy. It's like fishing a lake. Whoa, a real nice fish. And, they, and you know, the cool thing is when you're fishing these, these bulldogs and the, and the woolly buggers, they hit like freight trains. Man, almost pull it right out of your hand. So I cast in, stripped it about four times. Guy hit it, got off, stripped it a few more times. I don't know if it's the same fish or not, but boy, he whacked it. And he's a, he's a beauty. Holy cow, he's not ready yet. That's a tough fish. I got a pretty heavy rod here with my full sink line. He's giving me a tussle. What a great fight. Man, coming up. Oh. Well, I'll let you do the honors there, Dwayne. Oh, okay, God. Beautiful fish. Yeah. Gorgeous. Nice bow. Beautiful. We'll let him go. Yep. There it goes. Oh, that was a kind of a quick goes. release. But and there. It's full energy. You need and there to it is. Off. There's the fly. Look at that, baby. I'll let you hold him up for everybody. Now, there's a little key to this one. It's a whole new pattern. It is the Bulldog, but I tie it with this new UV2 material from uh, Spear River. Okay. And you know what? It sparkles, it dazzles, it's got that ultraviolet. It's fantastic. So we'll see how it works today. Seems to work good Could there. Be a good candidate for the bench. 
I think so. <laughs> a couple casts and you had a fish. So. Right on, here we go again. Again, as we mentioned on the intro, never happened before. Me and Dwayne have used buggers and tried buggers in here in July and they normally just don't touch it. They're so keyed on mayflies and caddis at this time of year that it's just exceptional to get this kind of fishing uh, at this time of year. So what are you going to go with, Big D? What well, are you trying? I'm going oh, to see I had another yeah. one. Oh, I'm gonna, got him. Got him. I'm going to say it was a bugger dog. Oh. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. They're just a dime a dozen on this bugger right now. Look at them. Just <laughs> You know, there's, these are little guys, but there's some big fish sitting in here. Like, this is a smallest one. I lost a real nice one, like, two minutes ago. Oh, this guy, unreal. We know they tag fish over 17 oh, pounds. You bet you, 17, 18 pounds up here. We've got, you know, they've caught them. So, we've got big potential in this side. <laughs> hey, you're, you're just the net release wow. guy. Haven't any time to fish. <laughs> no kidding. I won't cast for a minute. I'll let you get your line out. Well, that's okay. You keep fishing. But they're loving that UV bulldog. That's that's definitely a count. Oh, little guy, nice little guy. Woo. Nice. Well, here we go again. I lied, Dwayne. I'm just gonna cast. Real quick. <laughs> and the bite, nice thing is too, is if you can get all your line out. Like I've got most of the line off here. You know, until that's 80 feet. If you get that, you get a real nice long retrieve. I mean, this is where it's an advantage to be able to to really punch out a cast because the longer retrieve, the longer the fish have time to look at it, follow it. So it is a bigger advantage if you can cast longer when you're casting these full sink lines, for sure. They are, a, they are a bit tough to cast. They're really thin, as you can see. Makes it difficult to cast because they do coil up. So I always try to take my first coils, you know, a little further away from me and then let the rest coil in front of me. So that's the first stuff to pick up. So if you get frustrated with full sink lines, it's totally understandable because they do foul up a little more often because they are thinner. Well, it went down. It went down a couple of times. <laughs> you were too busy eating your chips. Just having a chip and having a little snack. One nibbled it and it came back yeah, for it. Yeah, it came back for it, yeah. Yeah, well, we, we switched over. Don's using the, uh, the bugger and I thought, well, no use too fishing the same, so I put the indicator system on with the caddis nymph, a bead-headed nymph. There's a few caddises coming off right now. So I thought that'd be a good choice. Yeah, it's and just like fishing a lake, right? With the indicators, yeah, perfect. Yeah, fishing a lake. Medium-sized fish. Well, nice scrappy fish. Yeah. How are you doing back there? Are you gonna be able to land it on your, on your own or what? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. But he is pulling hard. Hey, you're a professional guide. You should be able to do that. Yeah, but I'm usually guiding, not fishing. That's the problem. A little rusty. Oh, it's a nice fish. It is a nice fish. Beautiful. The only problem is, with this indicator, I don't have a lot of headroom. Ah. That's, that's why I like my slip indicator. Yeah. So I may need a oh, hand. Oh, we had a double header. A double header. I may need a hand. We'll try it. Oh, it's like They're strong. Wow. There, there we go. We got him that time. Nice. Just a little awkward with the long. Leader set up. Ah, those thingle bobbies are good though. Well, thingle right? bobs are great. Yeah. Trapped air, they cast nice, and they just don't release. But that's a nice fish. It is. Lots of potential Gorgeous. to get bigger too. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Hook soap. Nice. It's Columbia River Rainbow. Free. So when we arrived, we saw, you know, a few, few fish moving, but not a whole bunch. And now we're starting to see a lot more in this little back eddy. So once that happens, and you start seeing a lot more fish keying on it, something emerging or even on top, time to switch over. Normally they go away from the bugger and they'll start keying on, uh, like dwayne has got something with an indicator or, you know, six feet suspended below the surface or something even on top. It might even go to the dry flank. 
caddis. But right now, it's been about 15 minutes. I haven't had a hit on my bugger since we started seeing them rise. So if you see indicators like that where fish are starting to move on the top, you're normally not going to get them on subsurface with the bugger. They're going to want to start one starting to key up top. So I think this cast is going to reel up, change it up. Wow, another nice one. So we just worked the Kootenai River. We started way up in the high end uh, part of the Columbia, got some on the buggers. Then we worked the Kootenai, we were able to catch a couple of smaller ones. There was some good fish activity, but really tough to catch. They were kind of finicky. And then uh, we're working our way downstream. So we've hit one of our favorite holes. We always pick off a couple of fish on the dry fly here. And then we'll move down to the next segment. What's the next one you called, Dwayne? What was that next hole? Uh, just by Blueberry. Sandbar hole or? Yeah, Blueberry Creek. Yeah, Blueberry Creek hole, which is really good. And then we'll uh, we'll head back up, hopefully get some, some evening dry. But it's everything today on the fast water. We're having a hard time holding these back eddies. We've gone through the woolly buggers. We've gone through mayfly nymphs. We've gone through caddis nymphs. And I got the, this one on a dry fly because I saw a couple, a couple of feeding on the dry there. Oh, and this is a dandy, this one. This guy's got some meat to him. Oh, holy cow, jeez, I feel, I feel naked without my hat on. I get a hat on. Whoa, man. Oh, this guy's a tough fish. There's about five or six big guys just sitting there sipping right in this calm section. Ooh, gee, there he is, right on top. Every time I get him up, Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that fish. Another gorgeous rainbow. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Good job, Dwayne. Mr. Netter guy. <laughs> wow, that was sweet. Very good net job. Oh, you got him. You got him, man. You got him. Oh, he's nice. Nice fish. That's the one that was rising in front of the boat there. You get to be the yeah, net guy this time, Yeah, I Don. get to be the net guy. Nice. If I can get him in. Boy, is it starting to come on. I'm going to come up front there with pull you. pull you forward a little bit. Oh, he's not a bad one, Dwayne. Not bad. Why, did you switch over dry? Yep, dry. Back yeah. on the dry again. I think that's another beautiful I mean. Fish. Oh, yeah. There's fish all over this river. Gorgeous. Unbutton them. Look at that. Comes right out. Hold this guy up. Nobody can see him. And he's not huge, but he's just nice. You know, they're all gorgeous rainbows here. <laughs> nice size. Let him go. Yep. There he goes. To swim another day. And down and feed. Well, we got the good lighting now. And I think they came on the dry. Because we got in here, there was nothing. Nothing. Right. Within five minutes, that sun got a little hazy. Yeah. Boom. It's like a light switch. So why don't we catch a few more in the dry? Catch a few more. Then maybe we'll head down the next hole. Um, a good <laughs> idea. I love it. It's high water. What do you think about the high water? You think it's you think it's actually better fishing? I think the fish are real happy. They're um, Is the water staying cold? Well, it's cold, but they have so much room to move. I mean, they're in along the trees, that area we were fishing before. That's right. They're up in the trees, they're eating. Well, the, trees spread are, out. the trees are what, 15 feet yeah. underwater? Yeah, no, these fish are happy. They are happy, and plus I'm finding that water temperature right now, 58 on my depth sounder. Yep. That's ideal for rain. Sure, yeah. Perfect water temperature. Yeah. So let's get a few more big deep. Okay. Nice. Let's do it. Coming towards the boat. Another one on the dry. Wow. Awesome. Just when, we, just when you said you didn't see any. Didn't see any, and then I saw the one guy boil in the edge of that flow. And he came up and ate it. He likes and you know my cat's a little bit bigger too, right? Yeah, he's a size bigger. The size 12 is a little bigger, and with this high water, we're able to get away with traditionally, you know, normally we can't get away with big patterns, right? They're all 14s and 16s, but this year, with the high water, they're liking the bigger patterns. Five weight rods, the ideal setup today. Uh, I was using a six weight for my wet line for my full sink, five weight for the dry, and a five weight for the indicator. So, you know, if you got a five or six weight, you're pretty well suited for every kind of fishing we're gonna do out here. 
Classic Columbia River Rainbow, just right on the corner of the lip. Let's hold them up for everybody. Oh, another beautiful specimen. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? They're just oh, sweet fish. Man, we'll get them in. There she goes. Down to get some more to eat. Well, you know, there's still fish moving, so we might as well nail a couple more in the dry and we we'll head down to the next hole. And that's the beauty of the Columbia, especially right now with this high water, is there's more eddies and there's more runs than we've ever seen before. It's, it's amazing. We're fishing areas that, as I say, uh, we're standing on dry ground fishing normally, and now we can move right in. And there's, the only problem is the fish have dispersed everywhere. They've kind of moved into the shallow area and they're all over the place. They're not really consolidated like they have been, but still able to catch them. So it's, uh, it's not a bad thing. It's actually quite a good thing. Well, Big D, we're back at our original spot and we got rising fish. You know, I decided to take a little bit of time tonight, think about what I was going to tie up, and I think I'll use some UV material, some of that UV2 material I've been talking about. But you know what, let's go to the bench and see what we're going to tie up. Yeah, seemed to be working good. That's yeah, cool. and when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll talk about what we actually did tonight and, and finish up. Yeah. What do you think? Let's Sounds go to the good. bench and tie something up. Today on the bench, I want to tie you up Dawn's UV2 Caddis Pupa. It's one of my favorite patterns to use in our local streams and rivers, and what sets this fly apart is the UV2 material I use for the body. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size 12 curved nymph hook, some 8 aught olive thread to tie with, some medium flat wire for the weight, some UV2 chartreuse dubbing for the body, some olive ostrich hurl for the gills, some 30 gauge green hot wire for the rib, some olive Hungarian partridge for the wing, some small peacock chenille for the thorax, and some olive Hungarian partridge for the wing case. To start the fly off, before you put your thread on, you wanna take that flat lead wire, and we're just gonna wrap it forward and form a body and just keep it fairly thin. And of course, we want to taper this. I'm going to put it on in the back of the hook and just wrap it forward just to build up the body. And then I'll pinch it off near the head and wrap over one more, one more amount of wire at the front of the hook just to build up the thorax a bit. Now that your lead's tied in, take your olive thread and we'll wrap it on and wrap over your, wrap over your base of of uh, lead you put down just so it stays intact. Next step is take that hot wire, it's fairly thick wire, and start around the middle of the hook and wrap it in. And this will be the ribbing a little bit later. Now take some ostrich churl, and you want to pick out one that's not too long. You don't want this flaring out too much. Just something that's uh, then will make some nice gills on the fly. And tie it in. We'll wrap those up for the gills a little later. After you have your wire and your ostrich curl in, I'm going to take my UV2 material, and this is really the key to the pattern. It really sets this fly off. I'm just going to dub in some of this UV2 CLX chartreuse color, and we'll just dub it on our line fairly thin. I want to keep this fairly thin because we've already built up the body with the lead. And we'll wrap it forward to form the body. And you only want to go up about halfway, just past halfway. After you have the body tied in, we're going to take our ostrich hurl and just wrap it forward up the body. After the ostrich is tied in, we're going to take our rib and we'll wind it up and we'll try to, we'll try to follow just where I did with the ostrich. You know, maybe take a few more wraps, but try not to, to cover your ostrich too much, but just make sure those ribs show up. Now we want to put the wing and the wing case on, so I've taken one Hungar Hungarian partridge feather. I'm going to make it about just past the bend in the hook. I don't want this wing to be too long. I'm going to wrap it over right where the body ended. And then keep that on there. And we're going to wrap this over 
the rest of it to form the wing case after we tie in the body. Now take a strand of your small peacock chenille and tie it in near the head. And then we're just going to wrap in a, a thorax on the fly or a head on the fly. And I like to again keep it small, take maybe two wraps, two to three wraps on my peacock chenille and that's it. And then tie off. Now to finish the fly off, I'm going to take the remainder of my Hungarian partridge that I had to tie in the wing. I'm going to bring it over to form a wing case over the, over the head or the thorax I just tied in. And that forms a nice wing case on the fly. And now to finish the fly off, what I like to do is, is put a whip fish on. Of course, you always want to finish your fly. And cut off your thread. And you know, on this fly here, I don't mind putting a little bit of head cement on. I'll even put some head cement onto the onto the thread and just even cover my wing case a bit with head cement so it stays intact. So there it is, Dawn's UV2 caddis pupa. As I mentioned on the intro, it's one of the best caddis pupa patterns we've ever used in our local streams and rivers. And you know, again, I mentioned the UV2 material. When you get a UV light and you shine it on that fly, you can just see how much that fly glows and sets it apart. Well, what do you think, Big D? Call it a night? Yeah, it was a good... Good well, it was day. a great day a you know, for this high water. You know, as I mentioned in the show earlier, we'd be normally pretty well standing here. For sure, yeah. You know, the, the river would be through here. It's, what, 30 feet high? Like 30 vertical yeah. feet? Yeah, exactly. Like crazy. And <laughs> look at it. We got fog behind us. It was 36 degrees today, maybe even hotter. And we have fog because the water is still so cold. It's only 58 degrees. Normally this time of year, 64, 66, you know, really yeah. starting to warm up. It is. So now what? So you're the official guide for sport fishing on the fly now on the Columbia? Oh, on the Columbia? Yeah, yeah on the Columbia. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You bet. Well. <laughs> so when you're out here, you know, especially in high water conditions, you saw Dwayne on with his, uh, his vest. I was traveling when I had my life vest on. You got to take care because the water is big. It's kind of nasty. Conserve our waters. Give Dwayne a call. Mountain Valley Sport Fishing. Kootenayflyfishing.com. Yeah, Kootenay Excellent. Perfect. Give him a call. He'll take you on the Columbia. Great place to fish. See you next time. we we'll take sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.